I'm Justin Mott, full-time photographer and former TV show host on a TV show called Photo Face Off that you've probably never heard of. If you're new to my channel, my channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a full-time working photographer. Today, this is part two, or it's not really part two, it just relates to a video that I recently did. I will put a link to that video at the end. I did a video about why all photographers should get started in video today, if you haven't already, or even if you have got started in video, why you need to get more serious about video if you want to build a sustainable business, earn more income, and future-proof your business. So I talked about the why. Today's video is gonna be about the how. I'm gonna give you some tips. This is for all you photographers out there, all genres of photography, how to get started in video. I'm gonna teach you that today. <laughs> So as always guys, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com where I've got presets that will not make you a better photographer, but they will add some pop to your images. Those start as low as $4.99. You can purchase everything directly through my website. I've also got prints for sale for as low as $99, which make great gifts. You can send those out to friends, get ahead of the game for the holidays. Those start as low as $99 with free shipping worldwide. And for those of you interested in improving your photography, I've got all sorts of different options on my website for one-on-one -on -one classes, starting as low as $99 for a one-hour session with me via Zoom, where we can talk about your photography, we can talk about your portfolio, we can talk about how to improve your skills. That is open to all levels and all genres of photography. So today, let's talk about the how, how to get started in video. How do you do it? Do you just hit record and boom, done? Just like photography, you just hit record and you just hold it a little bit longer and now you're a cinematographer. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. So for all of you photographers out there that have waited, that have been hesitant, that have just put it off because it's just too complicated or you're just really not that into it, you don't want to get into video. You didn't get into photography because you want to shoot video. You got into photography because you want to shoot photography. You like to freeze things. You don't like unfrozen things. You want things moving. You want things to stop. You don't want them moving. Well. Listen, I understand it. I understand the hesitation. I understand the intimidation. I understand everything about it. I went through all of this. But what I will tell you is, at this point, if you are running a photography business, you should strongly consider it. Whether you're gonna do it yourself or subcontract it out, it should be some part of your business. For me, personally, my business, Mott Visuals, has flourished because we started doing video many, many years ago. When I started my business, it was predominantly commercial photography, and predominantly commercial photography for the luxury hotel and resort market. I was shooting interiors, exteriors, lifestyle shoots for some of the biggest hotel chains in the world. I'm one of the official photographers for Intercontinental Hotel. So we did a lot of big jobs all over the world. And what I noticed was like business was good, but I noticed there was a lot of other teams doing video and not us. And I thought, well, why can't we do that? And wouldn't it be better for the client if they just could go to one company to do everything? And wouldn't the visuals be more consistent if like it was coming from the same director or same creative director? Like if our business was doing the photography and doing the videos. So I went full force into doing video work, into doing video production. And I could say now many years later, it was a great move for us. I mean, when we first started, it was so tough. It was always like, oh, we do the photography shoot and then really try to sell them on like, oh, do you want to also do a video? And yeah, some would bite on that, but most wouldn't. And nowadays it's the other way around. Now we're being hired consistently to do video shoots and we've got to talk them into doing the photography. Sure, we do some shoots that are just photography and some that are just video, but most of our shoots are combination shoots. And most people come to us because of video. And then again, they add the photography on the side. And that isn't just for hotels and resorts. It's all types of photography. Everyone needs video these days. So if you haven't started already or you haven't really taken it that serious, you need to do so now because it's just gonna help you sustain your business, gonna help you generate more income, and it's gonna help you future-proof your business. So don't worry if you haven't got started. You should have already, but you haven't. That's why you're here. Or you haven't taken it that serious. Maybe you did a little bit. It's time to get serious about it. And here are some tips on how to do that. So the first tip I'm gonna give you is to start with your existing gear. One of the most intimidating factors into getting into video is all the equipment or the investment, buying a camera, buying the lenses, buying everything else that goes along with it. Well, if you're a photographer already, chances are the gear that you own already is powerful enough to do the work you need, at least for now. I mean, you've already got a camera, you've already got lenses. Sure, at some point, you're gonna have to do a second round of investment in getting a gimbal, maybe getting a drone if you don't have that already, and just getting ND filters, getting a video tripod perhaps, getting a professional microphone, things like that. But right now, 
you can actually just start with what you have. Again, you don't need 8K, you probably don't need 6K, you probably don't even need 4K. If your camera shoots HD, just get started now. Understand the basics, build the foundation, get that experience with what you have. Then buy all that other stuff later. The next tip I'm gonna give you is don't be above jobs. A lot of photographers just are in general. They just are. Like I know so many photographers, they treat every single job based on the best job they got in the last year or the best job they got in the last decade. So if they got that one like awesome job where they got that really great day rate and just everything was perfect about that job, the amount of control they had, the amount of creativity they were allowed to do, they want to treat every other job like that. And that's just really not the case. Don't Treat yourself, even in just your photography, before I even get into video, because you don't have the experience yet, but even for you photographers out there, this is just another little point I wanna make, you probably aren't too good for the job. Chances are, you, you probably aren't. I know a lot of you think you are, but you probably aren't. When you set that level, that new standards, like that one job that you got, like the best job of the year, the best job in the five years, it's just not realistic. You are the best like median job you had. You are, you are that. The jobs that you get booked, the jobs you get hired the most, like the average, that's you, that's where you're at. So if you had that one awesome job, you got lucky or whatever happened, maybe you earned it, whatever, but you got that one awesome job and everything was like perfectly paid and you had perfect control and all that, don't like, I know that's what you want as you understand, but you have to just earn that, you have to get that. So if you're only getting that once a year, once every 10 years, you aren't that photographer. Yes, you should strive to be that photographer, but you aren't yet. So if you're getting those sort of mid-level jobs, that's you. Again, strive for the top, but understand where you are now. Don't turn down all those other jobs or don't be above it because you're just not going to get work. I'm not saying you shouldn't like turn down like really bad jobs or people like jobs that people want to pay you in credit or like, you know, be good for your portfolio and stuff like that. I don't mean that. I just mean that like a lot of photographers out there, they just, they just think they're that one job they got in like that 10 years, which was just awesome. They think they're that but then they didn't get that. If you are that job, you'd be constantly getting that. And the same goes for photographers doing video, or even more so for photographers that switch over and start doing video. You're not like just shifting over. You're not here for jobs. You're not like, you're a photographer at this level, you've built up this level of clients, this kind of work, this level of day rate, and then you switch over to video and you just want to be like parallel, right? No, that's not the case because you don't have the experience yet. So you don't just start here automatically because you're a photographer. You start down here because you don't have the skills. You don't have the experience. You don't know what you're doing yet. So take on those smaller jobs in the beginning with video to get the experience. The same way you got to here with your photography, by starting here and working up, do the same thing with your videography. You're going to have to start over. You're going to have to be humble. You're going to have to drop the ego. Leave. It's hard. My ego is huge here. It's gigantic. It's really hard to move. i got to like pick it up, throw it out. You have to. When you start with video, you're starting over. Sure, you've got to have some of those skills. Sure, you've got a reputation. I understand that. You've got some of that experience, but you're starting over. You don't have the skills compared to the market. You don't have the skills to other people that have been doing video for years. So start here. Have that same hungry mentality that you had when you started with photography and earn your way back up to here. Earn it. It's not going to be given to you. The next tip I'm going to give you is to practice. I mean, just like anything else, you've got to practice. And you've got the gear already, or most likely you do. You've got a camera, you've got a lens, you've got a tripod. Film something. What I recommend is either do like a home tour or just do like a gear review for like a YouTube channel. And none of this has to be published anyway. You don't have to put it out on YouTube. Just, just go through the motions and just practice. It's, I understand for many people that's not your thing. You don't want to make a YouTube channel. You don't want to film yourself. I understand that. But this is just for practice. No one ever has to see it. Do it for you. So film an episode where you're doing a gear review. So you'll get practice filming a person so you can set up your tripod, set up your microphones, check your levels, all that stuff, film yourself, talk to camera, have a background, have your lighting set up, all that, learn, understand all that stuff, then film B-roll of the gear, do all that, you know, get practice with the movement, get practice with just moving the camera, whether you want to shoot it locked off or not, understand all that stuff, practice, just go through the entire process, script it out, Film yourself so you get practice doing interviews, you get practice with audio, you get practice like setting up an interview in the background. Film B-roll so you get practice doing that. You just get some work on your cinematography and your skills and your movement and all that. And then edit it so you get practice there. So you've got your script, you've got your shot list, you've done everything and then go into the editing room and practice. Understand color grading, understand how to do cuts, understand all that stuff. So you know, get into it, dive, just do work on it. Try one, go through the entire process like I said, do one video, then check it out, go through it, edit it, export it, watch it. it. Doesn't have to go anywhere. And then do do it again. Practice, work on it. Just like you did with photography. Give yourself little assignments, give yourself some practice. Anything you can film at your home. If you're more ambitious, go out and shoot something else. Go out and shoot an entire project outside. But I would say start internally just so you get those practice with the fundamentals, so you can build that foundation, and then go out and do something more advanced. The next tip I'm gonna give you is to partner up. I mean, certain things you're not gonna like to do, or certain things you're not gonna have time to do, or certain things you're maybe not gonna be that good at. Like, for me, it's good to understand the essentials, it's good to understand the basics, so you go through that by practicing, understand the movements, understand the editing, understand a little bit about color grading, but specific things for your business later on, 
you might want to subcontract out because again, you might not have time to do it, or you might not have the skills for it, you might not just, or you might not even be interested in learning it. So for me in my business, that's the biggest thing I did to get started. I partnered up with someone that really knew editing very well, then I partnered up with a cinematographer, and I learned from them. I learned a lot of things from them. I subcontracted them out for a lot of different jobs. I managed the visuals, I understood what I wanted to get, but they helped me because they had the editor's mind. They came from a video background. So partnering up with someone for bigger jobs and then building that to the client, that's a great way to get started. So yes, understand the basics, understand editing, understand color grading so you know how to manage and sell it later. But when you get bigger or you start to do paid jobs, you know, be realistic to yourself. Understand what you're good at, understand what you can do, understand what you can't do, and then subcontract that out to someone better than you. And then keep that all within your business. That's what we do a lot for our shoots for Mott Visuals. I don't do everything. I don't do the full production. I don't operate the camera all the time. I don't edit the videos. I don't do all the color grading. Smaller jobs, I can do some of those things, but color grading, advanced color grading graphics, I don't know how to do that stuff. I don't have heavy interest in it. I understand it. I know what I want but I subcontract it out and again, I bill it to the client. So the things that you think that maybe you're too intimidating, don't worry about that. You can always subcontract that out later, find a good partner to work with, and that really will save your business. You know, you're not gonna be great at every single aspect of it. It's the same with photography. A lot of people out there don't wanna do really, really advanced retouching. I don't, like I do the shots, I understand it. I understand what my retoucher needs, but for the really, really heavy advanced stuff, for the bigger jobs, we subcontract that out. The same thing goes for editing as well. Understand your limitations, understand what's someone's better than you, and then, when the job calls for it, subcontract it out. The next tip I'm gonna give you is to don't be intimidated. Everything in video can be intimidating if you're a photographer because you're already here and you're afraid to like start over again. It is intimidating and it's tough on the ego and it's tough just to get started again. Technically, there's a lot of things out there, but take it step by step. The same way you built your skill set for storytelling and technically for your photography, just take the same approach to video. It will happen, it's just gonna take time. Learn as much as you can, watch as many YouTube videos as you can to learn the skills, to learn editing, to learn movement, all that kind of stuff. Sure, there's a lot of things you're gonna have to learn and you will just through time, but there's a lot of skills that you already have built in as a photographer that are gonna cross over. You're gonna be able to use, you know, Understanding how to tell a story, understanding how to craft a shot, understanding composition, even the technical stuff inside of a camera. Yes, yeah, sure, the editing's a lot different, but you have some of the basic skills already, so just build on that. Again, through that practice, it'll be a lot less intimidating. The next tip I'm gonna give you is don't assume. You know, photographers always just assume, oh, well, I'm already a proficient photographer, I'm already successful at this level, I'm just gonna be automatically good at video. Well, you might not be. You know, it's gonna take time. You're not gonna naturally just be like awesome at it. Maybe you'll be talented at it, but don't assume you're gonna be awesome at it right away. Assume that it's gonna take time, assume it's gonna take patience, assume you're gonna to have to go through the same entire process you went through to build up your photography skills with video. So you can assume that. Don't assume that you're gonna be good at it. The next tip I'm gonna give you is to work on a real shoot. Do what you can to get access to a real shoot. Take an intern's mentality. When I started doing video, I was already pretty well established as a photographer. I was doing a lot of different assignments for major newspapers, major publications around the world, but I knew when I started doing video, I don't have the skills, so I offered my services. So I got on a shoot for Discovery Channel and I was just an extra set of hands. I got paid nothing. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I had to beg, I wanted to learn. I wanted to be on a shoot. I wanted to see what a big production was like. So I offered my services, I did anything I could to get on a shoot. If you're a photographer, another way you can get on, if you don't wanna work for free or if you don't wanna work cheap, maybe you can work on a shoot doing production stills. Just whatever you can do to be there, get on it, learn, observe look around that's the best experience if, if you can be on the ground if you can be there on a real shoot soak up as much information as you can and then use that to learn to gain experience to know what you can and can't do to know what you need to work on to know what you need to study to know what you need to practice on all that stuff you're going to learn so many things just being on a shoot so lose the ego get an intern's mentality get a beginner's mentality do whatever you can to get on a shoot and just soak up as much information as you can. And the final tip I'm gonna give you is to start by starting. Don't wait anymore. Right when you turn this off, go out and shoot. Grab your camera, it shoots video, turn it to video and just go shoot. No, have a little bit of a plan, come up with a little bit of script, but start, start now, start today. Don't start tomorrow, start today. Really, just get into it, get working on something. Practice every single element. Some of it you're not gonna like. Some people are gonna like editing, some people are gonna like color grading, some people are only gonna like shooting. That's fine, you're just naturally gonna like certain stuff and naturally not gonna like stuff. Stuff you're gonna be good at, stuff you're not gonna be good at. But you need to practice, you need to understand it, you need to have a basic foundation. So get out there and shoot something. Shoot yourself, shoot a mock YouTube episode, shoot a little story, whatever, you, whatever interests you, but just make a plan and start shooting today. That's the best advice I can give you, is to get those skills by just practicing. Don't put it off any longer. If you really want to future-proof your business, 
Trust me, you're gonna need to understand video. You're gonna need to start shooting video. You're gonna need to start selling video. That video is gonna need to match or exceed your skills in photography because that's what you're gonna get hired to do in the future. I'm not saying photography is dead. It's not. We still get hired quite a bit for photography, but again, we do both. And that really has saved our business. That really has not only just saved our business, but it's really helped my business grow. I wouldn't have employees and I'd probably just be working sort of job to job or kind of like paycheck to paycheck. But instead we have a sustainable business, which I hope is future proof. But really, if you look at the numbers, video sales dwarf our photography sales in the last couple of years. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. So take those tips, get out there and shoot. Don't wait any longer. Even if you put it off, even if you're intimidated by it, all those excuses, just stop go and shoot something just start to do it slowly and slowly and slowly brick by brick the same way you built your photography business take the same approach to your video side of the business the next thing you know you'll be more versatile you'll be making more sales you'll be working more and who knows you might actually enjoy it like I have I really really enjoy the video process thank you guys for tuning in today again don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com don't forget to like share and subscribe don't forget to pick up your camera and start shooting video today thank you guys for tuning in have a wonderful day Thank <laughs> you.